All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. In this video, guys, I want to talk about, um, I guess it's really answering a question I got in the YouTube comments, and it's been something I'd been thinking about making a video for is, uh, so shout out Mark Redham for putting this in the YouTube comments, guys. He wanted to ask about the different phases of the game, right? Like what makes you an early game, late game, mid game player, right? So I went through, I created some different phases for you guys. And he was, he kind of mentioned galactic power. And I'm just going to put the using, you know, got to use my, got to, you know, guys, I can't always talk and think at the same time. You know, I can't multitask. I'm a man. So, you know, but, um, yeah, so side note that, right. But, um, you know, one of the things that I like to think about is that those phases aren't galactic power locked. There is one that I would say is definitely dependent on your galactic power, but I'd say most of the time where this, kind of transcends is that, you know, does your roster have an identity or have you built up certain things, right? Like it's my vision of this game as far as where you're at is much more dependent upon like what you have unlocked rather than like what your galactic power is, right? Like I saw somebody in my fleet arena where they had like 8 million galactic power, they had more GP than me and they had one GL. Like that person is not even in the mid, like they're in the mid game, but they have not transitioned beyond that, right? Like I just, I cannot put them beyond that because they haven't done the Galactic Legend work, right? Galactic Legends are going to be big parts of this. Your ships like Radis, Piet, uh, Negotiator, Malevolence. Those are kind of some of your key milestones, right? So we're going to get into this, guys. Please note that I don't have everything jammed in here at once. I have examples, so we'll talk about this, guys. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. So let's get started. Nope, this is the wrong tab there. I am saying, I will say here, I am working on my updated farming guide for 2023. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So let's get started, guys. In the beginning, right? In the beginning, you're going to be farming these things. If you're following my farming guide or, you know, they're kind of natural farms, right? The Phoenix to get Palpatine, you're going to get Thrawn. You want to build our empire up here, right? I always recommend Commander Luke Rebels as a good starter team as well. And then you're like bounty hunters. You know, I just have Bosk as that placeholder. The beginning part of the game, even if you buy the hyperdrive, you're still going to be in that beginning part of the game. The beginning part, guys, don't get, don't be, don't feel bad if you think, if I like, if you're in this area and you're a beginner, like that's okay. It's, it's the beginning stages of the game. It's not really time period dependent. It's not dependent upon your galactic power. It's just dependent upon what you're doing at the time. Your beginning part of the game is building a base, right? You're building the base to build to the next level, whether that's a Galactic Legend, Malak, General Skywalker, whatever that is, you're building there, right? So the most important thing in the beginning of the game is to not get too spread out where you're doing too much, but that you're focusing in the right areas. Like once you get Thrawn with your Phoenix Squadron, I just have Hera as the placeholder here, right? Once you get Thrawn, you stop worrying about Phoenix. You don't need them anymore, right? Same thing goes for like, um, you know, some of your other like legendaries, right? That like you get your empire, you get R2D2. You don't need to worry about gearing R2D2 right away, except for the Commander Luke event, right? But then you get Commander Luke and like you don't want to pour a ton more into R2D2 at that time, right? Just kind of hit those milestones and keep going, right? So that's the beginning stage, right? That you're just you're you're building your base and your roster doesn't, what I would say is it doesn't have an identity yet. And that's what moves us into the early game is that your roster has an identity. And by an identity, what we're referring to here is that you've got, like, you, you get Malak or General Skywalker and or, right? Like, those are both... General Skywalker, I would put in the major farm category because his requirements are definitely a lot more steep than Malak. Malak, to me, is, a, like, a more minor farm, but it's two legendaries, right? There's a, there's a good bit of characters there. He's get one, so, like... You, it at least gives you an identity that, like, your roster, you went for Malak, right? Obviously, if you, like, rush Kylo or you get Kylo, right, that's giving your roster identity that I can clearly see what your intentions are, right? That's when you transition into the early game. Why I have Chewbacca here is that with the new gear change, you're going to be able to invest in bounty hunters earlier and complete this Chewbacca event because you don't need relics on your bounty hunters to get through this event. You can do it with, you know, gear 11, gear 12 bounty hunters with decent mods. So I have him here because part of that early game, like transitioning, is that you've gone beyond doing some of those early legendary events that are easy, and you start transitioning into those more difficult legendary events that require, 
specific teams, modding, things like that. That's when I kind of, you know, you start again, I'm going to use it a lot, build that identity of what your account is. So this is going to be one of the larger phases, right? We're going to spend a lot of time in the early game because our next phase, the mid game is going to be the only phase that is locked by galactic power. So let's get down there. And this is the middle of the game, right? 4 million GP. Once you hit 4 million galactic power, you are in the mid game. That's because that's when conquest unlocks in hard mode. And that's when proving grounds unlocks. At this point in the game, I would expect you to probably have your second GL already or executor. Um, Executors is a very popular farm right now. So I have Piet here just kind of as that placeholder. It's something I've seen a lot more players doing earlier and earlier, take advantage of shifts because they're so important. So I could see that if you went and got like a Jedi Master Luke as your second galactic legend, and then you get executor, I'm not going to complain either. Like there's pros and cons to each one, right? Other signs that you're in that like mid game, right? Is that you've got like one of your guild event currency, two ships at seven star. If you could have both, that's great, but you might only have one of them at seven star, but at least have the other one unlocked. That's going to be really key is that you have those get ships. And then obviously you guys have to throw Wampa in here. If you're going for Jedi Master Luke, you have to have our King Wampa guys. And this is the part where we have to plug our love for Wampa. Guys, if you want to see King Wampa hit Relic 8, all we need to do in 2023 is get this channel to 5,000 subscribers, guys, right? Get this channel 5,000 subs, Wampa's hitting R8. All right, so back to the content, right? Regularly scheduled content. This mid game is going to be a phase that you're going to be in for a little bit, right? Like if you got all of these things, you're still in that mid game, right? To transition from mid game, it takes a little bit more work inside of your roster, right? which is where we're going to go next. And we're going to call it the late game to hit the late game. You need to have one of the following galactic legends, Jabba, Kenobi, or Lord Vader. The reason I say one of those three is they're the three big GLs, right? They're the three best galactic legends in the game right now. They're the three with the hardest requirements. Um, they're also the ones that are the most impactful for your roster in terms of territory battles, territory wars, grand arena, right? they will take your roster to a level that it's not currently at, right? So with that, with Kenobi and with, you know, Lord Vader, you need Maul and Commander Tano, which once you hit that 4 million GP in your mid game, right, you've unlocked proving grounds that you can start farming these characters, right? So my recommendation is always going to be for you guys that those are two characters that it's like really important to get through for those GLs. I don't recommend going for all three of these right in a row, just because it's a lot of resources, right? It's a lot of resources. It's a lot of farming, not just signal data, but gear, Kyra text, like they're very difficult to get. So like, I would recommend Jabba first, just because of the mod mission that he's in, right? That mod mission is so important that Smuggler's Run 2.0. Um, I think his requirements are actually very good not only for him right that it gives you more time to kind of build the rest of these characters right again just one man's personal opinion guys you'll see in the farming guide what we talk about there um and then obviously kenobi or lord vader just dependent on what you think your roster needs and what you want right the late game though is as a continuation right to me the late game is the biggest part of this game it's the one part of the game that i would say takes the most time to do because it's the only one that I think there's a lot in here because there's just so much that needs done, right? So in the late game, you're getting your Admiral Radis, right? You're getting Profundity. You're looking at Starkiller, Dr. Aphra, right? You're starting to earn Reva shards, right? Like this is the late game. Your bulk of the game is going to be spent in this late game category. To me, it's the one that's going to be the most important time in your roster. And at least right now, like, to me, the late game is when you're finishing off those Galactic Legend farms, right? One man's personal opinion, you don't transition out of the late game until you've got your journey guide, like, completed, right? Because before then, if you're farming stuff in the journey guide, I cannot call you an end game player because there's still so much you haven't done yet, right? Like, I don't have Ray, I don't have Jabba, I'm, like, this close to Lord Vader, I am very close, but... 
my point being that for me to transition to the end game to like do a lot of those other passion projects, I still need to finish Galactic Legends. I still have like very specific farms I have to do. So this keeps you in that late game for a while, right? This is where you're going to spend the vast majority of your time, right? And then you're going to get to the end game, right? Again, guys, not galactic power that's here. What defines the end game is that you've got all your journey guide characters, and then it's time to start building into those farms that are going to like help your guild in the new Rise of the Empire territory battle, right? Which, if I had to say when you're doing Rise of the Empire, it's going to be when you transition to the late game. Um, I think that going to Rise of the Empire early will hurt guilds. And I do want to throw this in here, right? That if you're in the mid game, 4 million GP, you're not ready for Rise of the Empire yet. You're not going to have enough teams to fully participate. You're not going to have the right characters. You need to transition into this late game. You need to have some of those other characters that are not only required, but like good for it, right? Lord Vader, Kenobi, Java, Afra, Inquisitors, right? This is These are the characters that boost you into Rise of the Empire, get you ready, right? So... Once you're in this endgame, these are the characters that you need for random things, whether it's like the new platoons, right, at relic levels, that you're just going in and doing completionist stuff. That's the end game, right? The end game is about farming those characters that you would never farm early because, like, you know, Clone Wars Chewie, like, why would you ever relic him when I need to get Ray? Oh, well, I need Clone Wars Chewie for operations so my guild can be more successful. So... To wrap things up here, guys, right, to kind of keep you guys going, this game's phases are outside of the mid-game. I don't see where Galactic Power makes sense as a marker for, you know, saying what part of the game you're in. And that's because this game is constantly changing, right? They're going to add new Galactic Legends. They're going to add more characters to the Journey Guide, right? So it's better, I think, for me, right? And maybe eventually it gets to the point where, you know, the early game is at 4 million and that something else comes in that changes to what the mid game is, right? Like this guy, this, you know, these brackets will constantly evolve as the game changes. And I think that's one of the really cool things to see in this game is how it's progressed over time, right? The earlier, I would have said that the beginning of the game was before level 85, but I think that now we're at the point where you're still in the early stages of the game. If you're level 85, because your roster doesn't have an identity yet, right? You haven't completed that first major milestone to say, hey, I did this. Like getting Grandmaster Yoda, Palpatine, Thrawn, like those aren't major milestones, right? Those are just characters in the journey guide that are very easy to do. You dedicate yourself, you get a Malak, General Skywalker, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, you're getting, you know, farms like Chewbacca done. Those are major milestones in your account. So... In closing, guys, I hope this helps you. I hope you find it interesting, right? But I also hope that it gives you some, I don't know, like helps you understand that like one of the biggest pieces of advice in this game is just patience, which sounds so like Jedi of me to say, right? Like just patience, patience, patience. But really, this game is not a sprint. It's not even a marathon. It's an ultra marathon, right? And it's an ultra marathon that you're, what's the, you know, that you're running on a treadmill, right? That like, Sometimes you feel like you're not making progress, right? Like you're running on the treadmill. It's just like, man, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. You're getting somewhere. You just can't see it until you're done, right? That after you've run that 50 miles on the treadmill where you actually haven't moved a step, but you're exhausted, you're tired. And then you look and you're like, wow, I dedicated so much of this. And look at what I was able to accomplish, right? Like look at my roster. That's what this game is all about. It's not about that, you know, boom, I did a quick thing and I'm awesome, right? That's not the way this works. This game is about, you know, patience, perseverance, and endurance, guys. So hopefully you guys see this. Hopefully you like my opinion. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Maybe I, maybe you guys think I'm crazy for thinking that the end game doesn't happen until you have all the journey got completed. Love to hear what you guys think. As always, smash that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.